usually have an OLED display. This is where you can see the big advantages of when light is absorbed by the cell. For research purposes at the Light Technology Institute, organic light emitting diodes and solar cells are manufactured from different components. Because the layers that are used are very thin, they are sensitive to contamination. Therefore, production takes place in a clean room, which is sealed off from the outside world and may only be entered through an airlock and with protective clothing. Scientist Daniel Baru demonstrates the manufacturing process of an organic solar cell. OLEDs can be manufactured in an analogous manner. The starting point is the anode, a coating consisting of indium tin oxide, abbreviated as ITO, deposited on a glass plate. The ITO is coated with a light-sensitive photoresist, which is developed only at the locations that are to be etched. The remaining parts will conduct the electricity later on. So the whole thing is similar to manufacturing a printed circuit board. In the first stage of the production process, Daniel Babu puts the exposed ITO layer into a container filled with half concentrated hydrochloric acid. The acid etches away the exposed areas. Subsequently, the ITO layer is washed with distilled water. Since indium is a rare element, its use is one of the reasons for the currently high cost of organic electronics, though not the only one. Another reason is related to the size of the cells. For a laboratory level, small cells are used that are cut to size. Would have run the first herausforderung. I would say the biggest challenge in the field of organic photovoltaics is actually scaling up. That is to say, to manufacture the solar cells that we are currently able to produce on a small area in the lab with large printing machines at some point in the future. That means we are scaling up our solar cells. This means that we are scaling up our solar cells to a 10 by 10 centimeter area. So we can show that the processes are scalable and transferable to industrial plants or industrial processes. The actual upscaling process to square meters for day production. This will be a task for you. In the laboratory, scientists work with glass plates because they are more stable. 
ultimately, however, the goal is to print organic electronics on flexible plastic foils. When the glass plates have been cut to size, they need to be thoroughly cleaned. For this purpose, they are immersed in acetone and isopropanol and then placed into an ultrasonic bath where they are cleaned by means of sound waves. In the next step, the glass plates are blow dried. Before the active layer of the solar cell can be applied to the glass plate, different components have to be mixed together. For this purpose, Daniel Baru inserts an empty vial into the glove box. A vacuum is created to ensure that the box is devoid of oxygen. Scientists at the Life Technology Institute are currently conducting a large scale project on the sustainable production of organic electronics involving the use of non solar cells. When I go into industry and I want to produce something on a real large scale, then I have to take care that my employees aren't poisoned by the solvents that I use. Accordingly, we have to make sure that all the work we're doing with solvents in the lab, that we don't have to worry about security, can later on also be implemented on the industrial scale. Before adding the solvent, an absorbent polymer is placed into the vial. The polymer is an organic semiconductor made of carbon compounds. It is because of these carbon compounds that we speak of organic electronics. Then a solvent, such as dichlorobenzene, is added using a pipette. The entire contents are mixed by using a shaker. In the next step, the solvent will cause the deposition of the light-emitting layer of the OLED or of the light-absorbing layer of an organic solar cell. Da unsere organischen Halbleiter, die wir benutzen, sind, according to the ordinary standards, organic semiconductors that we use to absorb light are actually very good insulators. These layers are very thin. We've got the rest with thickness of about 100 nanometers here. consists of a metal. For this purpose, the researcher applies a stripe mask to the substrate. He removes the mask again after the cathode has been thermally evaporated onto the substrate in a high vacuum chamber. In a current research project with industry, scientists want to make sure that in future the components of organic electronics will no longer need to be vacuum evaporated in a laborious process in order to make production faster and thus more cost efficient. Problem is provided by the structuring. With 
this method, each individual layer of the solar cell or the light emitting diode is cut by a laser before the next layer is applied. In this way, a large number of small cells are confused. In the cutting area, the individual cells are connected to each other by the electrodes and switched in series. By switching them in series, subsequent energy losses will be minimized because the current will decrease while the power remains consistently high. The laser is computer controlled and the laser beam is directed via mirrors towards the experimental setup. At the cutting point, the substrate is placed under a lens which focuses the laser beam. To verify the efficiency of an organic solar cell, it can be checked by using a solar simulator and by means of quantum efficiency measurements. The quantum efficiency is the ratio between the absorbed photons and the electrons that provide the electricity yield between the different wavelengths of light. The measurement begins with the short wavelengths of ultraviolet light, continues with the spectrum of visible light, ranging from purple to blue, green and yellow to red, and ends with more wavelength and further function. Another possibility of locating defects in both solar cells and light emitting diodes is to examine it under an atomic force microscope in the characterization lab. Here, the organic semiconductor is again inserted through an airlock into a glove box. After it has been put under a laser, scientist Stefan Reich first has to install the probe tip into a holder and to align the laser. displayed as a layer height profile. The atomic force microscope measures surface currents and other material properties with very high resolution. If, for example, an organic solar cell is to be tested, the scientist can measure spatially resolved photocurrents within a solar cell in order to determine which areas supply more or less power. Currently, laboratory-made organic solar cells provide an efficiency of 11.1% based on an area of 1 square centimeter. Where scientists are investigating a new technology aimed at enhancing the efficiency of the cells. In terms of flagship momentum, well, a current flagship project is the research we are doing on organic polymer solar cells. Here we stack two solar cells on top of each other, further improve the absorption of light. That is to say, the light that hasn't been absorbed by the first solar cell is still absorbed by the second one. In contrast to organic solar cells, an OLED emits light. However, since there are more to the test by applying a voltage to the two terminals. The light effects show that the unit works. The organic photovoltaic is for the nothing for the process. Today, organic photovoltaic is still an area of active research. Of course, there's a number of working groups doing research in organic photovoltaics, not only in Germany, but this is happening worldwide. Especially Europe has a leading role with regard to research on organic solar cells. These activities are supported by the European Union. And of course, this applies to us too. Nevertheless, there are also some companies that are already active in this field, and a number of these companies, among them also German ones, say that the first pilot project for organic photovoltaics are almost ready for market entry. Of course, we're not speaking of applications such as solar cells for rooftops here. We haven't got that far yet, but of mobile applications and the creation of bags for similar applications. than organic solar cells, OLEDs are indeed already available on the market, but they are being used above all in display technology. With the development of cost-efficient organic electronics, OLEDs will in future also come to the general lighting market. Anyway, this means to us that there will be another light source available that could in fact be used for any purpose whatsoever.